In this tutorial, we will be making a simple mouse-controlled escape the room adventure game in GDevelop. And we'll start by creating a new project in GDevelop. We'll scroll all the way down to empty game. I'm going to change the path to the game just because the, the folder already contains assets for it. And I'm going to click empty game and let's begin by changing the game settings. So we go to game settings, properties, Let's rename the project into something like Escape Room. Um, and we're going to change the screen resolution to 1280 per 720 pixels because that's how big the assets are. And we're going to click Apply. Now, as uh, last time around, we'll need to start by creating a new scene for a game. So we'll go under Project to Scenes and we'll click on Create a New Scene. I'm going to rename the scene by clicking here, click and rename, and the first scene in the game will be the menu screen, the starting screen in the game. So I'm going to rename the scene into Menu. And I'm going to double click. And now we're editing the scene in the visual editor. So we're going to create a simple mouse controlled menu for the game. I'm going to uh, scroll out a little bit, zoom out a little bit so we can see the, the window that will be our starting screen. So these are the dimensions we set for the game. So I'm going to find the list of the objects. It's empty at the moment in the right part of the screen. I'm going to click on add new object like so, and the new object we'll be adding is a sprite, so it will be the background for our game. So I'm going to click Sprite, we'll call it Menu Background. We're going to add an animation. Again, it's not an animation, it's just a static image, but that's what GDevelop wants to call them. So uh, let's click on Add, and the thing I'm looking for is the file called Menu Screen. PNG. That's the one from the assets folder. And I'm going to click apply. So now we have our menu background and we can drag and drop it onto the screen. I'm going to go to the properties with the menu background selected and manually change the X and Y coordinates to zero and zero. And if we test the game now, we can see that, yeah, here is the menu screen without the buttons. So the thing we need to add now is the buttons. Uh, and we're going to have three buttons, start a new game, load an existing game, and settings. Only one of them is actually going to work by the end of this tutorial, just starting the new game because the rest is something for later perhaps. But let's add three so that it actually looks like a proper menu. So again, we're going to objects, add a new object. I'm clicking on the plus sign. It's also going to be a sprite and the sprite is going to be called New Game. We're going to add an animation, and the first animation we'll create for it is New Game 1, that's uh, the, the file name, but we're also going to add another animation, and that one will be from the uh, PNG file called New Game 2. So we have two animations, one is for the initial way the menu item looks, and the other one is for when you um, when the cursor is on the button, you want it to be visible to the player that the game has responded somehow. So we will highlight the selected menu item if the, the player positions their mouse over it. So let's click Apply. And let's drag it hereabouts, somewhere in the middle. And we'll create two more items and then we'll make them interactive. So let's create another object sprite again and we'll call it load game and we'll add an animation again let's add an animation the name for that one is load one and let's add another animation for the load game sprite this one is um, load two and apply and let's add another object sprite settings again we're going to add an animation the first one is settings 1, and the second one, can you guess it, is settings 2. Right, okay, so let's drag the remaining two menu items on the screen. Here they are. 
try to adjust them a little bit. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So let's give all of them, I'm going to select, I'm holding shift and selecting all three items, and I'm going to give them the same X coordinate. Let's make it 470. So they are um, horizontally aligned, and I'm also going to try and see that there's, whoops, the gap between them is roughly the same vertically as well. So I'm going to move settings down a little bit. Okay, I think this looks about right. If you test the game now, nothing happens because we haven't added any interactivity yet, but at least it looks more or less like a game menu. Okay, so now for the interactive bit. We have to go from the visual editor, from the scene editor to the event editor. So I'm going to click on menu events here. And as of now, there are no events. So GDevelop doesn't do anything other than show the elements in the scene. We're going to add a new event and the event will be um, added like so by clicking on add a new empty event. So this, this is to remind you a trigger. We are adding a condition. So something that causes the state of the game to change. And then we're adding an action, which is how does the game respond to the condition? So the condition that we want to check for is whether the player is holding their mouse cursor over the button, right? So we're going to add condition. There's lots of different stuff here. We're going to go mouse and touch. This is the thing we're looking for. And we are going to select this one. The cursor touch is on an object. So when the mouse cursor is over the object, namely the button, let's click here. We need to select the object. Let's start with new game. So when the cursor is over new game, we click OK. What does the game do then? Well, it changes the animation from zero, because animations are numbered in GDevelop, to one. The second animation we added, which is a slightly highlighted version of the first one. So we're going to click Add Action, Sprite, because this is where the animation properties are. Animations and images change the animation. And we are selecting the same object, New Game, and we're going to set its animation to be one, equal to one. So New Game set to one. Okay. And if you test the game now, you can see that if we move the cursor here, it's highlighted. The problem is when we move the cursor away, it's still highlighted because we haven't told GDevelop otherwise. What does it do when the cursor is no longer on the button? So we're going to close the preview now, and I'm going to copy and paste the same event. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click this thing here. The cursor is on new game and I'm going to invert the condition. See this, this trigger here, invert condition. Okay. So this is the bit that tells GDevelop what to do when the cursor is not located over the button. And then to get that case, we want the animation to be set to zero. So let's change the value to zero like so. And if you test it now, you can see that this is how it works. The cursor is over, the thing is animated, we move the cursor away, it's no longer highlighted. Now we're going to do the same for the remaining two buttons. So I'm going to copy and paste these two conditions. Somehow I now magically have six of them, which wasn't my intention, but that's uh, good enough. So let's rename new game to load game for these two. Load game. And likewise, we're changing the animation as well, not for the new game sprite, but for the load game sprite. And the last bit is settings. Again, I'm changing it to settings. You can also double click on the thing if you want and see the full view of the um, action list. But I find it's easier to just select the bits that needs to be changed if you're copying and pasting and change that like so. Settings, settings. 
And if we click here and preview the game, you can see that we almost have a functional menu with the um, side note or the, the caveat that it doesn't actually do anything. So the last bit, the last event we're going to create for now is um, for the game to take us to the other, to the actual beginning of the game when the player clicks on new game. Except at the moment there isn't anywhere for the game to take us to, so we're going to go back to the start page and open the project manager. You can click here or you can click on this icon and we're going to create another scene which will contain the first scene, the first level of the game proper. So I'm going to click, add a scene, rename it into, let's say, room one. It's an escape the room game. And now I'm going to go back to the events for the events sheet for the menu scene. And I'm going to create an empty event, create a condition. And the condition is when the mouse is clicked. And this is, uh, it's called mouse button press or touch held. And we're testing for the left button to be clicked, because that's, that's what the users normally do. Um, and the action is to be found under scene. And the action is to change the scene. So the name of the scene we want the game to take us to is room one. Okay. Right now, any left click will trigger that. It doesn't really matter where we click. If we just click here, it still takes us to the new empty scene we created. Uh, the way we change that is we're going to make this a sub event for this one. So if the cursor is, sorry, this one, for some reason they're in the wrong order. If the cursor is touching uh, the new game sprite and the player clicks the left button of their mouse, then we're changing the scene to new uh, to room one. So we'll just go in to drag this here, like so. So you can see now this is a sub event that only is triggered if the first, the main event is true. You can also create sub events by selecting an event and clicking here, that also works. We don't need that one. So let's test it now. And you can see that if I click here, nothing happens. If I click here, nothing happens. If I click on new game, I'm taken to the new scene. So we have a simple menu going on and I'm going to save the project just in case.